Vegas 7 News presents Closer to Look. Welcome to Closer Look. I'm Macy Marie G. Two suspects are in custody after an off-duty Border Patrol agent was shot and killed Sunday night in Texas. The Willacy County, Texas Sheriff's Office has arrested Gustava Tijerina and Ismael Hernandez Vallejo. Javier Vega Jr. was shot in the chest Sunday night while fishing with family members. His father, Javier Ve Vega Sr., also was injured in the shooting. Authorities say they don't believe the suspects knew Vega was a Border Patrol agent. Well, joining us now is State Senator for District 31, Cal Seliger. Mr. Seliger, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Okay, so the border crisis is on the forefront of many Americans' minds these days, especially here in Texas, where a border agent was shot and killed just days ago by an illegal immigrant. Now, reports I've read say that both suspects had been arrested and deported numerous times and have been living in South Texas illegally for some time. What does that say to you about our current immigration system? What it says to me about is our current system of border security is seriously flawed. And now we're going to have two people probably convicted of a felony that will go into a state prison at our expense. Uh, talks have gone on in the past about sending those people back to their home countries to then be imprisoned, and those countries have no interest in it. it, it, it the, the problem is caused by the federal responsibility to protect our border, but the problems are state problems because state and local governments have to pay for them. Right. Now everyone can agree we have issues at the border, and Governor Perry recently authorized National Guard troops to secure the border. Now, do you think that that decision will really solve the crisis at hand? Will it solve the crisis? No. Until we do a far better job of border security, the crisis will not be solved. Can we help? address some of the problems productively? Yes, that manpower on the border will see to it that people do not get that past them on the Rio Grande River. That is useful. But, but the problems go very deep. When you talk about 203,000 people last year who came in from countries other than Mexico, 57,000 of them were unaccompanied young people. And just look at the impact that they have, are going to have on our educational system, our health care system, our criminal justice system, and those bills are going to have to be paid here in the state of Texas. And that's a big issue right now. And a lot of the reports I've heard say that, you know, these minors will come in, they'll get a date, uh, a court date, and it'll be months in the future. So they're just kind of sitting around waiting until they can, you know, stand before a judge. And if they are not detained, they may never show up for the court date anyway. They'll just right. sort of sink into that very large body of people who are in this country without documentation. Once again, all of those problems come from flawed border security. I want to be very emphatic. Border security is national security. And that's the responsibility of the federal government. And, and no one's done a very good job of it over the last 25 years. I happen to think the current federal government is doing a particularly uh, flawed job. Right. All right, Mr. Seliger, well, let's move on to education now. Several weeks ago, you were appointed by Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst to serve as the co-chair of the Joint Interim Committee to Study Education for a Skilled Workforce. Now, what exactly will the committee be looking at and what do you personally hope to accomplish? All education is workforce related, whether it's English or philosophy or math or engineering, we need a well-educated and well-trained workforce. And so what we're going to do, one of the primary things, is look at our alignment, both public schools with colleges. For those young people, how well are they being prepared for college? And when we talk about workforce, career and technical education, are kids getting the things in public school to align them with the things that they will get in community college and then in the workforce? There are currently between third grade and, and the end of high school, 900 Texas, Texas essential knowledge and skills. Mm -hmm. What educators tell me we're about an inch thick and a, an inch deep and a mile wide on things like that. What can we do to simplify these and, and give educators a clear and more discreet picture of what we need to do right. to prepare the young people in today's classroom for the workforce and university tomorrow? Right. Now, just real quickly, local school administrators have strong opinions about state mandated testing, and they feel that too much time is spent in the classroom preparing for these tests and that one test should not determine a student's future. Will you be tackling those kind of issues? I have since I first went in the legislature in 2004. In fact, it was my bill, original bill, that reduced tax tests from 15 tests to five tests. And it was very much an educator's bills because in this senatorial district, we represent 
uh, 82 school districts. Mm -hmm. And so we need an accountability system. The test is not in itself a bad thing, but I'm working to find ways to see to it that the test doesn't dominate the educational experience. It is a tool, both for the accountability of the school system and the young people. There's lots of work to do. Well said. State Senator Kel Seliger, thank you so much for joining us.